Hi, everybody. Welcome. To I'm Melvin Peters, Stampin' Up! Demonstrator in Canada. You can find me online at stampingwithmelvin.com. And today I thought I would show you a whitewashing technique. And if you haven't played with this before, it's really fun to do. And the Stampin' Up! Calming Camellia stamp set, which is a uh, stamp set that you can get with a qualifying order during celebration. So if you host a party or you've got a big wish list, you might be able to get this stamp set as well. Um, it's one definitely that you will want to uh, have on your uh, on your wish list. Hey, Catherine, welcome. Um, so I thought I'd show you how to do this technique. Uh, it uses the uh, the uh, Whisper White Craft ink, um, which you may not do, pull off your shelf very often. I know I certainly don't. So I thought that this would be fun to play with today. And this, uh, this stamp set is perfect for it. So let me switch over to my desktop and we'll get started. So what you want, so this, first of all, this is the Calming Camellia. Oh, and I've got that horrible glare. Let's just take the label out of this and get rid of the glare. There we go. This Calming Camellia stamp set is so pretty. Uh, and I know, I think I shared it last week, and I've said this, my mom and dad had a camellia um, bush that grew up the back of our house when I was growing up, and it was absolutely stunning and one of my favorite flowers. And this is so pretty. It's a distinctive stamp, so you get tons of detail with it and some great sentiments where they've got the mixed fonts with the block and the, and the it's kind of cursive, but more italics writing. So really pretty. What I'm going to do is I've got a piece of rich razzleberry. I'm just gonna grab my trimmer. I've cut it four and a quarter by 11. And I'm gonna score it at five and a half. This tends to be one of my favorite folds. I don't know, I always seem to go for the tent fold. So four and a half, oh, I don't know my papers, something's wet here. Okay, okay so, um, we will make that the inside. So we will fold it on the score line, always fold into the mountain or the little rays to so the opposite side to what you've uh, what you scored on. So there's my card base. Then I've got, these are the pieces. I've got a piece of basic white for my first layer. I just wanna add a bit of a pop of color and I thought white would be good. And then, so that's cut four inches by five and a quarter. Nancy. And then I've got another piece of rich razzleberry that is cut three and three quarters by five. And this is what I'm going to stamp on. So for this one, I'm actually using a slightly darker color than what I've got um, for my background. So I'm using Blackberry Bliss. Hello. All right. I don't have my phone with me. So if you haven't given permission to uh, StreamYard by going to StreamYard.com slash Facebook. I can't actually see and I don't have my phone on. So whoever said good morning, good morning. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. All right, I'm going to ink up my my stamp. Oh, and you can just see the detail on this stamp. Um, let's see. Just so amazing. These um, these uh, distinctive stamps are so amazing. All right, so I'm going to stamp this kind of closer, a little closer to the top than the bottom because I want to leave room for a sentiment. Okay, so we just make sure I've got all of that inked up there. Oh my gosh, isn't that pretty? Can you see that? It's just so stunning. And when I start to add some, some, uh, craft ink to it, you will be even more impressed. Okay, now while that dries just a little bit before I actually add color to it, I'm going to stamp my happy birthday on my sentiment. Now I think my piece, let's just, pretty sure, yes, okay, I have to make sure. I've got, a, I've got a strip that I cut off. This is a half inch strip that I cut off a piece of basic white. And I just wanted to make sure, hopefully, there we go, Oof. that it will fit, and it does. Okay. And then while we're at it, and while we're still waiting for, for that to dry, just a touch. Hello. Oh, Lynette, welcome. And Darcy. 
welcome. Manitoba, welcome from Manitoba. Okay, glad you're here. Um, you've come in through YouTube, uh, Darcy, so don't forget to subscribe. That way you'll get notified when I go live or when I post videos. All right, let's stamp this. One of the tricks with distinctive stamps is trying to make sure that your stamp pad is not overly juicy. Um, some people have issues with it and they um, say that their, their stamp isn't working. It's often due to the fact that there's too much ink on it and you're just losing the details of it. So if you've got an ink pad that isn't quite as juicy as another, then use it for, for when you're using a distinctive stamp. You can also take your bone folder and just kind of move the ink around if you want. There's my label. Um, a little bit. Just take your bone folder and and on the ink pad, just you can see I've used it, but just kind of move the ink around if you've got a lot of ink um, on your pad. Okay, so here's mine. This should be good. Now I'm gonna just grab a block. So I'm just using a clear block, and I've got my whisper white craft craft ink. So I'm just going to take, now this is thick pigment ink. This does take a long time to dry if you're using it to, um, to stamp with, or a longer time to dry, I guess, than the other inks. So I'm just putting some ink onto my, my block. And then I've got, I've got some water in my water painter. And I'm just going to squish and thin this out. You can use a paintbrush if you don't have a water painter. I've got way more than I needed here. So now you're just going to use this as a paintbrush. So you don't want a lot. And I'm just going to go over. I don't want it a ton on it. I'm just going to add some, some color, some white to the flowers. This will dry lighter. Um, so you will see the, the image um, behind it. So you don't want it, like I said, you, you want it thinned down and you don't want it, just gonna add a little bit of more water into here. So thin it down and then don't have a ton on your brush. Um, and so it will soak in to the, the uh the image and then just kind of leave the whitewash behind you can see i've got more on this one side than the other I'm just trying to even it up a little bit all right so there's the one and then i'm not going to do it for all of them this one in here or at least all the whole image. I'm just going to pick the flowers and do those. And you don't have to worry about being completely accurate on the flowers and making sure you get the whole image covered. Whitewashing is is kind of a, a little more abstract anyway. Isn't that pretty? Just kind of, it's actually turning kind of a pinky color. Um, as it soaks into the paper. And let's see, I think that's a flower there. This one, um, the top flower is a little better. This one I, I got a little bit, I, once I um, so, uh, diluted it down a little bit was better. Um, that first flower that I did, I actually got a little bit darker than I really wanted it to be with the, with the craft ink. But it's, you know, probably will continue to dry. So maybe if you're making a card to give to somebody and you want to make sure you've got the right consistency to your ink, you, you want to try it out first before you actually, um, before you actually, uh, put it down. So I'm just going to take and see if I can I've really diluted this down. Ooh, I'm laying more down. Okay. 
All right, we'll leave it as that. Okay, so that's all I really want to do. I've got lots of ink there to do for others. You can clean your brush to get rid of the white um, just by rinsing it out. I will do that in just a minute. So you can see that it's, I've just got the flowers colored um, and that will continue to soak in and dry. So now we can start assembling our card. So I'm going to adhere this to my card base. All right. And then this. Oh, I had my uh, virtual launch. I know some of you were on my virtual launch yesterday. It was so much fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you, uh, there's still time to put orders in until uh, until seven o'clock Pacific tonight. If you put an order in of sixty dollars or more, not only will you or um, earn a free celebration reward level one. Um, I will send you a package of the iridescent rhinestones, which I'm going to add to my card. Um, so if you put an order in before seven o'clock tonight for $60 or more, you'll get a package of these iridescent rhinestones and they are so pretty. Okay, so I've got my happy birthday. I also thought, yeah, I do. Thought I'd add some ribbon here. Maybe I will just tie a bow. I can do that. Small bow. Okay. And thanks, Sandy. I love this technique and I don't do it very often and I really should do it. Let's use a glue dot, put that on. Um, it works well on crumb cake as well if you um, if you haven't tried it before. So I'm using it on Rich Razzleberry and I stamped in Blackberry Bliss, but you could do it by on something like crumb cake. I've done it where I've actually embossed, um, heat embossed and um, in gold, for example, and then colored in the whitewash um behind it so lots of ways to do it just fine trying to find a dimensional i'll use the black dimensionals because of the the dark background that it's going on to all right then we'll put happy birthday Make sure I got this straight. And now I'm going to I'm going to adhere my inside on before I put my iridescent rhinestones on. Oops, you haven't done that before. I almost put my my inside piece on upside down. Luckily, I'm using the the liquid glue, which is a little more forgiving. And you, you can. can uh, uh, you have a little bit of extra time. Just looking for a sentiment. No, I think I'll just leave it plain like that. All right, let's add some iridescent rhinestones. These are so pretty. Okay. All right, there are three sizes, so let's add the three different, one of each of the sizes. That's the littlest one. We'll just put them there. I don't know if you can actually see the rhinestones. Yeah, there they are. So they're pretty. They're like our, our regular rhinestone jewels, basic rhinestones. They're a little bit bigger, I think. The largest size may be a little bit bigger, um, uh, but just they're so pretty. All right, so there's the card. You've got to try this technique. Don't forget to dig out your uh, craft ink. Um, if you're like me, you've got at least one bottle sitting on the, the shelf. And I don't use craft ink very often, so um, it's a great way to use it uh, and play around and make some really beautiful cards. All right, 
So thanks everybody for joining me today. Um, I will be live on Tuesday night at 6.30 Pacific uh, for a sketch challenge. And then Thursday, I will be live again at 6.30 Pacific with a technique. I'm not sure what technique it'll be, but another technique for you. So I hope you'll join me. And again, if you're coming in through YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you get notified when I go live or when I post videos. All right, everybody. I hope you have a great day. Happy stamping. Bye.